Hey! If you've been following my channel for a while, you'd know that I have a complicated relationship with Windows File Explorer. It, it sucks. Here's the problem. If I need to find a specific file in my whole computer, I gotta know its full path. But sometimes, I just don't know the exact file name, so I'm just kinda lost. Also, when I'm navigating the file system, I gotta search through a wall of text to find the next folder to click on. Like, you know when you have a bunch of folders? And you know what you're looking for, but you just can't find it, so you do like this awkward little cursor dance? Yeah, well, I find that frustrating. Basically, it felt like having to specify a full address and postal code just to walk over to your friend's house. So, what did I do about it? I made my own file explorer called K-Files. Short for OK File Explorer. Because it's OK. It's not bad, it's not super, not extravagant. Just OK. It did what I wanted. And I used it for a while and I was a happy boy. It was fast from using the Rust programming language, simple because it ran straight in the terminal so I could open it wherever I wanted. It felt feature complete with like favorites and recent lists. And I even made it so you can run scripts. But there were a few shortcomings. First of all, the UI was janky and it just felt hard to work with. Like the library cross term sometimes just glitches out when you resize the window or just straight up crashes. And I still have to memorize the path, so that's not solved. If anything, it made it harder to navigate without the file icons. So basically, I had just remade a faster and jankier Windows file explorer. So I thought, well, Time to remake this. Alright, here are all my criteria for the new K files. Number one, eliminate as much memorizing as possible. I want to be able to find a file even if I don't know its name or where it's stored and do so from anywhere on my computer. Second, I want icons to look at so I can immediately see and pinpoint exactly the thing that I'm looking for visually. And also, while I'm at it, I want to make a cleaner UI because the terminal just kind of sucked. And I want to make a better and more flexible fuzzy search. There's nothing wrong with the previous one, but sometimes it bugged out. It'd be nice to have a little more flexibility. First thing that I did was switch from a simple file browser using a tagging system. Why use tags? Two reasons. Number one, it aims to remove memorization. Using tags, I can categorize a bunch of files and folders by meaning instead of by path. You know, just like in my brain. For example, when I want to go to a friend's house, I don't think Oh, I'm going to A Country B C D C Avenue number 123. No, I think I'm gonna go see my friend. That, that's it. <laughs> when I think of a funny meme I want to send to someone, I don't think, oh, that reminds me of pictures slash haha underscore funny slash calculate.jpg. No, I think that reminds me of that meme with a cat calculating stuff. That's it. Okay, now, you might say, okay, but you still have to memorize the tag's names. In this case, I could just add tag aliases, which are basically alternate names for tags. But I haven't gotten there yet, you'll see later. Reason number two for using tags is for its querying capabilities. For example, if I want to find all image files related to projects, I could just search for files that match both the pictures and the project tags. Kind of like a Venn diagram. 
And if you think of it this way, this means you could also have tags inside of tags, subtags, if you will. This is what a tag looks like in code, well, at least my implementation. All right, next, let's talk about the application and UI. Uh, first of all, I'm still using Rust because speed and safety, but I'm going to switch to using an actual UI framework. I'm just tired of staring at a glorified terminal. And also, that'll make it more accessible for other people. So, first, I tried using EGUI because that's what everyone was recommending. But for the life of me, I just could not get it to work. There's game engines and stuff out there that do use EGUI. So, I knew I had to be doing something wrong. But to be honest, I was just fed up with it and I didn't want to install a whole game engine just for a file explorer. So I switched from Egg UI to Iced. Iced is a relatively young UI framework that was originally meant to be used in tandem with the Coffee game engine. Iced uses the Elm architecture, which basically goes, you render UI widgets in a view function, then when the user interacts with those widgets, it fires a bunch of messages that you handle separately in an update function. You then change the state of the application and that updates how the UI looks and so on. So enough theory, this is how it actually went. Here you can see I added a grid where our files will be displayed and here I got thumbnails working. The thumbnails are built in a thread pool and they're cached in the temp directory, so it doesn't have to keep rebuilding them all the time. Actually, I believe Windows File Explorer also does this. After some time, this is where I got. I improved the searching a bunch, like I wanted, from a simple fuzzy search to using a constraint list. So you can specify whether you're looking for a file or directory with dash dash file or dash dash directory. Uh, you can search for specific file types. You can search for a specific string in quotes. And everything else would just be a normal fuzzy search. Here's a couple examples. Feel free to pause and read if you want. I made it so you can also invert any of them, an exclamation point. And it also works on fuzzy search. So for example, this would discourage a file like never gonna give you up.mp4 from appearing. It would still appear, but it would just discourage it. To be honest, it was kind of fun to implement. What wasn't fun though, is this search bar. This search bar took me so long to make. It's not even funny. Like, it's just a text input with a selectable dropdown. How hard could it be? There were many other widgets that were so close to what I wanted, but not quite. They stopped just short of it, you know? And the thing about Iced is that it's relatively young and quote unquote, constantly changing, which means there isn't much documentation, even for the slightly advanced features. So in the end, I had to create my own widget, Frankensteining together the different ones I wanted, all without documentation. It was hard, but thankfully, I managed to make it work. And I mainly credit Rust's strong type system for this. Anyways, moving on. So far, to edit tags, I've been directly modifying the tag save file, which is pretty impractical. So once I was happy with the searching, I moved on to actually being able to edit tags in a separate screen. My first attempt kinda worked, but I didn't like how cluttered it felt. Like, 
I was trying to squeeze so many features in such a little space, plus I knew I'd be adding even more features in the future, so I just scrapped that. And I decided to separate the tag list screen and the tag edit screen. At least the UI looks a little cleaner now. And here, instead of having a bunch of buttons for adding, removing, editing and reordering individual entries, I decided to just have a text edit instead. It does all those things in just one widget, so that's less clutter in my opinion. I did add these buttons to make it easier to add entries, because nobody likes to have to manually type out entire paths. Next, I sobered up and I realized I have a bunch of unwraps littered absolutely everywhere. So I made a notification system complete with bootstrap icons. After that, I changed the tag's serialization format. So how they're saved, basically. I went from using Surday and Taml to just Nano Surday. The main thought was that it would maybe reduce compile times, but I'm not sure if it made a difference or not. It did come with the caveat of some data structures not being supported, for example the, the, the path buffers in the entries. So I had to make a separate struct for saving tags and convert between them for serializing and deserializing. But hey, it works. At this point, I was starting to get pretty happy with the state of the app. Like, I would unironically use k-files for real, if not for some quality of life features. So that's that's what I added. I uh, made it so enter opens the first result, some theming so it's a bit easier on the eyes. I fixed the cyclic subtags that reference themselves. I added an actual config screen. I added keybinds for focusing the Korean. And then I fixed some inconsistencies and in converting paths to string. And that's about it for now. If you want to use kfiles for yourself, it's available on GitHub. And yes, it's open source. Um, it's not finished though. There's still a bunch of features I'm planning to add in the future, like the hub screen or tag aliases, if it seems like it's going to be useful. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something. See you next time.